Papercut. Hey guys, Papercut here with a video about aggression. Uh, I was coaching someone today. His name's Rock Lobster. He's kind enough to let me use this uh, this video of his play to teach us something. That I realize I've taught a lot of people whose style they want to play is one TC all in aggression. The idea being is you want to be the person making units and going immediately. Some civs, this is a great option. Other civs, it is not. But no matter what civ you're playing, there's this basic tension between when do I know I should be aggressive and how should I be aggressive? And when do I need to be patient? Um, and we had a really good discussion about this when coaching him. And I thought it'd be a, a nice little video to make. I don't expect this to be long. Um, and it's going to be a town English focus because he is an English player. But I think the, the theory and the idea applies to any civ if you're trying to be aggressive. So I, I, I'm going to show you his video here. A rock lobster for context is he floats high silver, low gold. Uh, and we want to see what he and he wants to execute in one TC longbow rush. Where does it go wrong? What does he need to look for? How does he adjust? And then I'm going to show you a clip of me playing against him. And I'm going to play English to demonstrate the idea I was trying to get across to him. So we're going to open up here. The first thing that's really vital if you're going to be aggressive is that your scouting really has to be on point. Um, now, for some civs, there are units you're going to make no matter what. Delhi, you're probably always going to make Ghazi. French, you're always going to make uh, Knights. English, you're always going to make Lombos. So you're going to open that unit basically no matter what. At the same time, though, you do need to look for certain variables that will affect your aggression. So Rock Lobster is playing against an HRE player. He wants to make longbows. What he has to consider? The range of his longbows is everything. Same with French. The damage you, your charge does with your knight is everything. And you want to be aggressive in the sense that you want to put pressure and punish somebody for not matching your aggression. The key with aggression is if your opponent is doing anything but matching that. So they want to fast castle. They want to 2TC. They want to focus on eco upgrades. They will not have the same amount of units as you. They're making a choice to gain advantage some way else. So your aggression has to pay off. Whether that is forcing them off a resource, whether that is killing villagers, whether that is starving them of resources so they can't gain anything once they try to get to their advantage. That's your goal. And you want to be as aggressive as you can without throwing everything away. And so... What Rock Lobster is afraid of is he's had experiences when he's walked out with his longbows and lost them to horsemen. Or he, and, and so he has been kind of conditioned here to be very careful with his units to his detriment. And what we're going to see here is that his lack of aggression is actually going to give his opponent too much space to do what they want. First thing that's vital is if you're going to be the aggressive civ, get most of your scouting done in the Dark Age. You want to try to clear at least half the map, potentially three fourths, so you know where your resources are, and more critically, you need to know all the resources around your opponent. Where is their secondary food? Where is their secondary gold? Where are their wood lines? And then when you're pushing in, you want to ask yourself, where is the easiest resource for me to cut out, uh, cut off? So in this case, for the HRE player, probably wants the fast castle, right? You want to cut off gold, and then if he wants to try to make units. You want to cut off wood lines. This is why Himiyama is such a great all-in map because the resources are so spread. And if you can cut them off, it's really hard for him to go anywhere else. Like if you cut them off from this wood line, where's his next wood? Forward, forward, and the one in the back is very far away. So his goal should be to, he needs to get a longbow here as soon as possible, as safely as possible. So the scouting on aggression is really, really important. You need to see what your opponent's opening with and are they immediately making a counter or are they doing something else? So let's watch what he does here. His scout's going to be a little late to see. He gets the council hall up. Now, the vital thing about aggression is you need to be making units the second you age up. He hits age up and he's not making units yet. So one thing we talked about is your macro needs to be set up that the second you age up, you're making units. Has the wood, doesn't have the food. He probably should have got a fifth villager on food about halfway through the age up. So that he's getting enough for villagers and enough to start making longbows. And then my suggestion is you are generally sat and marching those longbows halfway across the map. Your goal being, if you notice your opponent is opening something like horsemen, you have time to walk backwards. If your opponent is not opening horsemen and is doing something else, you have time to get there. Now, of course, there's variables. Your opponent is French. You're never going to walk out. The knights are too scary. You definitely need spearmen. Uh, but in general, it gets any civ that's not a knight civ. You want to start heading across there because the difference between your longbow getting there, the difference of like five seconds could be the game, whether he gets that tower up or not, if he gets the resources he needs or not. Instead, he's slow on making longbows. He spends his wood instead on making a barracks. Fine, hypothetically, but um, I would have liked 
starting mate, I would have liked seeing the longbows first and then adding the barracks once we have a confirmed horseman. His biggest issue is that he is not yet even gone to see what his opponent's opening with. And since his opponent was, did a late age up, he could have already been here with his first few longbows. Knowing the age up just hit, this is the only time his opponent could stop dropping a stable. He could already be here starting to shoot him off gold. So one, if you're going to be aggressive, really important to be at your opponent's base and, and seeing what he's opening with. So he walks up, sees no production. And this is where another minor mistake is. My suggestion, especially if you're so low APM, when your scout gets to the outside your opponent's base, just do a shift click and shift around, which you'll see in my example later. I am not the highest APM player, but shift around the outskirts of your opponent's base so you can see and keep check, guess, guessing or seeing what he's opening with. He knows production. He needs to check the gold. Look at the gold talent. What, what are our signs? Tower on the gold, probably fast castle, especially if there's more than three villagers on the gold, probably fast castle. If there's a bunch of villagers on wood, like four, five, six, seven, eight, he's being aggressive. Like he, he needs wood to make stuff right. So he's going to be aggressive. Um, those are kind of the signs you're looking for. Same thing if like if you see villagers on stone, he's probably going to TC. So we're looking for these early signs. Him stopping here, and still having no villagers cross, or units cross, I mean, is an issue. He's making longbows, but they're just next to his, uh, next to his council hall here. The same issue if you're playing like Delhi, which is a sub I play a lot. You'd want the Ghazi already crossing so that you can start harassing. And, and once again, the goal is not necessarily even to kill a vill. The goal is to make his vills move, to make it, make him not be able to stay at a spot, and to have to react. Maybe make units, make, oops, make units do something that's throwing them off his plan. Crosses, sees the gold, only three on gold. And we see Vils chopping wood. So this is probably some sort of units. Once again, if we look at opponent's resources, he's stacking resources. And this was a blunder by his opponent. His opponent hasn't obviously decided what to do yet. He could have already been close to castle if he had been concentrating his resources on that. But he's gathering wood, but also holding resources. And so Rock had a chance here to already be here with Longbows, push him off the gold. And then push him off the wood because if Longo stands here, he's getting no wood, he's getting no gold. And standing right here is outside TC range, which you can always click on the TC and see the range. So, this complete lack of aggression when seeing absolutely no units, this was his window. This was the window right here. And this, and this is why I suggest crossing halfway until you scout officially because you want to be there as soon as possible. If you had a knight, you'd want the knight to be hitting immediately. I've coached French players with their first two knights are sitting by their base. That's not the aggression. The aggression starts the second you can make a unit. One or two units can do a lot of damage if they have no units to respond with. Um, so that lack of aggression, which just look how long it takes from the cross. One, as of course, always be making villagers, always making units. And now, since the opponent has no units, this barracks was a complete waste. Didn't need it. Um, unless you're playing a Civ that's opening with a cavalry landmark. Byzantine with the Hippodrome. French with the... Um, French, oh my gosh, French with the School of Cavalry. Or you see them drop a stable, don't, you don't need to drop a barracks, actually. Um, just do pure longbows, and then later on, add spearmen or add men at arms, if you're, when your eco starts getting better. But this complete lack of aggression is an issue, especially because generally civs with good aggression have kind of the worst ecos. So the aggression makes sense to make up for your weaker eco english doesn't have a great eco right now um the farm nerf has really hurt them and so they either need to go on the map or to be safe they have to make farms which aren't as good as they used to be and so attack you with the longbows puts your opponent at an eco disadvantage especially against hre which has a much better eco than him um that's also why you see english go 2tc so much but think of french french doesn't have a lot of eco bonuses the eco isn't that great um so their aggression is based on doing damage and with the knight whether that's making the villagers move cutting off a resource or killing villagers um other examples delhi has actually a great early eco because of the berries and the free upgrades but so but since they don't have a power unit they don't have longbows they don't have uh knights they do have gazis though the mass of the gazis is key and oh, just massing units in general is key but on the flip side once they run out of the berries things get a lot tougher for them um but this lack of aggression here is ruining all of his advantages and that's why rally point is so important you don't want to be so aggressive that if they surprise you with a horseman you die that's where scouting comes in but you also want to give yourself an opening to then attack if there's an opening and what's going to happen in this game is he's going to continuously have openings to attack uh but he's not going to be able to fulfill it 
often because he's not rallying his units forward. Uh, once again, this is a mistake I see a lot of like the silver to gold area make. No shade on him. It's really nice of him to let to let us use his gameplay here as an example. But now his opponent is making units and he's really far behind. Last thing I want to talk about aggression is attack angle. He's attacking directly on the production in his mind. The reason being, well, it's forward. I'm, I'm attacking from my safest position. And I'm trying to stop his production. Resources. It's all resources. It doesn't matter if he's made production. If he has resources, he can't use the production. This attack angle is the best. Gold, wood, and his farms all cut off. That's where he wants to attack from. Um, so I'm going to switch over to my game against him to kind of show this in action. I wanted to give him a visual example of this idea between patience and aggression and using the scouting to best set that up. So here I am playing English against Rock Lobster, who's on Ottoman. I'm going to demonstrate once again the use of scouting, vision, patience, and then a timed aggression as soon as I can to cut off resources. I am not an English main by any sense. I've been against English enough though. And I've watched English enough to get a sense of what you generally need to do here. So if I do something that might be outside the, the perfect English gameplay, I apologize. Um, I have played plenty of Byzantine though. I use longbows there. Okay, so I'm gonna age up. Key, as you see, council hall is forward. Longbows are slow. So shortening the distance, the cross distance is critical here. I know for Ottomans, their Sapahi, very, very good. So I want to be careful of Sapahi. If I'm seeing him open those, I need to be wary. Another thing, what resources do I want to open with, considering what I want to make? I definitely need a lot on wood. I need to make, I need to wood in a lot of instances. Mill, uh, farms, council hall. I do jump at barracks only because um, knowing Ottoman, Sapahi are such an important thing, but I will not make a spearman until I have confirmed that there is a stable drop. Um, but that's purely because who I'm playing against here. You notice I'm immediately circling. If you look, does it does that show? Maybe it'll show if I do this. It doesn't. Okay. I'm gonna keep my scout here and then I'm gonna shift click him around the outside. But I see two stable drop. So immediately I was rallied for. You notice I rallied to the halfway point. The second I see the stables and confirm he's dropping stables. I'm gonna immediately bring these longbows back. Boom. Now why? If I'm being aggressive, how am I not? I'm not doing damage if I'm not being if I'm not sending my units across. The point of the aggression is if I'm aggressive and they're not matching my aggression, I will then create an advantage. And my advantage will be that he is trying to gather resources or do eco upgrades or rush castle. My units will be there to punish him for it. If he's matching aggression with me, then we're even. Um, he's not getting any special bonuses. He's not going castle. He's not getting 2TC. We are even. So I'm okay with being patient here. Um, I trust that my comp can beat his if I just continuously make units. My spears beat his sapahi. My longbows do a lot of damage. So I'm I'm content with being patient because I have nothing. To, I have no need to be aggressive at this point. I will just lose units to sapahi, and we're on even footing right now. Um, if I had not seen stables, I'd think a tower on gold. We're sending the longbows across because at that point, uh, there's nothing to stop me. There's no unit that could kill me that I can't either kite. And if he's getting a tower up, I can attack from the opposite end of the tower with my longbows. This will range him off a resource. So I'm going to run my longbows back. And my goal here is to basically have a spearman per uh, cavalry unit. If this was... Uh, if this was knights, I would probably want two spears per cavalry unit. But the goal here is still longbow mass. I need to have a lot of longbows, no matter what. Um, so I don't want to make too many spearmen. It's enough spearmen to defend and then get plenty, plenty of longbows. So I see the Sapahi production. I'm just circling, circling, circling. I'm seeing if he's adding another production. If and how I'm trying to catch how many Sapahi he's making. I'm just where I rally my units. Well, since I'm not rallying aggressively, I'm gonna rally need my the most important resource that is unsafe. The wood line's kind of unsafe. Gold, I'm willing to abandon gold whenever I need. I don't necessarily need gold. It's nice to have. Um, but I'm rallying near my wood line. I see the Sapahi crossing. And also, I have two Spearmen at this point. So I'm not afraid of crossing. If he tries to attack me with two Sapahi, Spearmen do a lot of damage. Longbows will do plenty of damage as well. And that's what you want to see. You don't want to over Spearman because the fear of making too many Spearmen, one, you won't have enough long mode to do damage. And two, if he starts making his own archers, you're pretty uh, sunk. So it's about building your unit mass power. 
and often for any civ it's just a range mass with enough front line so they don't get jumped by cavalry i am still gonna rally at this point because i saw his uh sabahi coming and since i have nothing to defend with and i don't want to drop a tower yet i'm just gonna pull my villagers off of gold it's not like i need it to make units it's nice to get upgrades but i'm gonna focus on safety while i'm crossing here scout is still watching his production and as my units cross i'm gonna once again do another circle to try to find unit location drops a tower near his berries love that um that means he probably doesn't have the wood to drop a tower on anything else i know where his his uh wood line is i know where his gold is i am not afraid at this point to circle his base because i've only seen sapahi um as I build up another group, the thing I'm worried about here, if someone makes cavalry, one of their potential goals is to cut off your reinforcements. So I'm just making enough spears to cross and then getting another longbow mass to send across. Push him off his twin. Still circling. Since he, once again, he dropped the tower on the resource that I don't really think was the most important thing to tower. His Sapahi dive in under TC. They're going to lose a lot. Since I know his Sapai over there, I'm clear to come up here and pressure. One Vil dead. The other Vil gets away. Ooh, curses. But now his wood line is completely open. And here's the thing. A lot of times I see people cut off a resource, and then if there's no villagers there anymore, they leave. Just stick it. I'm going to stay here. And I'm just going to kill villagers. I see him dropping another stable, which I'm fine with. He probably can't afford to make Sapai out of three stables. He probably that should have been an archery range. But I'm just putting him off wood. I'm sitting here. No need to go in any farther. A key of aggression is not losing units unnecessarily. Um, you want to make sure you're continuously building your mass. Pressuring where you can. But losing a group of villagers when you're being hyper uh, Not a group of villagers. A group of military when you're hyper aggressive is really bad. Because your equal will probably be worse than your opponents. And so you'll struggle to catch up. To catch back up on the, on the numbers count. So... I'm not going to overstay my welcome. I'm sitting here as long as I can. I know I've killed two Sapahi, so I'm not too afraid. But since I'm still sitting here, he can't get back on the wood line. Catch his uh, scout. And now I'm just building my mass and setting it across. So at this point, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have the eco to keep making units. And if I look, he has one Sapahi, two Sapahi. And that's it. Now, um, a higher level player would have probably played this differently. and would have been more effective at matching me. But even then, that means... I'm being very careful with my scout and not moving out my mass unless I absolutely need to, especially with a slow unit comp like English here. If I lose my mass, I can't run away and that will be very, very bad for me. Um, I retreat. I let him back on the wood because at this point, I know I've done so much eco damage that if I just mass, I can push in and win. And that's what's going to happen. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little thought process about aggression and what you need to think about of aggression. Finding the resources, carrying them off, whether to be patient based on what I'm seeing, and then when I can move out. Um, and then once the resources are cut off, he's going to really struggle to match me. Him making farms is really bad, for example. And uh, if any civ you want to be aggressive with, it's all about um, pressing, pressing when you can, and then making that mass to go in for the kill. Um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel my size. If you're interested in coaching, check the Discord uh, link in the description below the video. And good luck on your games.